Hello and welcome to section 7, score-based algorithms, the learning procedure. Back to our COVID example, imagine that we're given some score, for example, the likelihood. How can we perform a systematic search to obtain the optimal Bayesian structure? So rather than focusing on a score, here we will be focusing on the search procedure itself. Score-based algorithms are based on a score and a search, search procedure. The score measures the goodness of fit of the structure to the data. You may say, well, it also captured model complexity in the BIC. Yes, but at the end of the day, that was to increase the goodness of fit to the test data set. Anyways, we have a score. We have a, it could be, for example, the likelihood function. And we have the search procedure. An algorithm is required to search for the structure with the maximum score. Where does it search? Well, the search space consists of all possible DAGs with the random variables as the node. So if we have three random variables, CMD, then all possible DAGs over these variables will be our search space. And each of these DAGs will be one state. And of course, to limit the search space, we may impose constraints such as having at most two patterns for each node. Okay, so in a local search procedure, neighboring states are formed. In the previous slide, we just had the states listed, but here we will have neighboring states, the DAGs obtained by applying an operator on the current DAG. Those will be the neighboring states. So if I have a state 1, say this DAG, then by performing either of these operations, say adding, deleting, or flipping a link, then I will get to another DAG, which will be my neighbor. So state 1, if I add the link CD, I will get to a neighbor. If I flip M to D, then I will get to another neighbor. And I can do other additions, deletions, or flippings, and I will get to other neighbors. And the same holds for the other states. So I will have a network of the states. You may consider other operations, such as adding two edges at a time. Doesn't matter. At the end, we will still have that network of the states. Then what is the local search procedure? Well, it's to start from an initial state, say this one, and iteratively move into the neighboring state with the high score. So I will start from one, I will move to the one with the high score of my neighbors, and then again do that, and so on and so on, until I reach a maximum, a local maximum. So suppose each DAG has only two neighbors and the following curve represents the likelihood score. So I can either move right or I can move left. It's a simplified version. This is the likelihood scores. This is how it looks like. This is the part, the point that I'm interested in. These are, that, which is the global maximum. These are some local maximum, right? Now, starting from the current state, imagine I'm here. By moving to the neighboring state with the highest likelihood score, which is the procedure for a local search, I will be moving up. A local maximum will be reached. I will eventually reach here. And then I will check whether if I go further to the right, will it increase my score? No, so I better stay there. Okay, so I'll get stuck here. But this is still an improvement compared to the current state or an initial condition. Anyways, this local search algorithm, uh, we can have several of them. Greedy Hill Climbing Search and Taboo Search, these are to find uh, such a local maximum. We'll start with the greedy hill climbing. The greedy hill climbing search is quite straightforward. We will start from an initial state at G0. We will find a neighbor of G0 with the maximum score and we will, we will repeat this loop to find the local maximum. It's basically as what we described earlier. So you may ask that, okay, flipping a link is equivalent to deleting and, de and then adding the reverse direction. So why do we consider it as a separate operator? I will leave it as an exercise here. Just note that 
the score may actually decrease upon the deletion. Okay, so you may have noticed that the greedy hill climbing is quite similar to the continuous gradient ascent. It's basically a discrete version of it. Let's see the algorithm in practice. We want to obtain the optimal uh, structure for the COVID mask social distancing problem using the likelihood score. We want to apply the greedy hill climbing. We have to start from some initial graph. Here we will start from the empty graph. And you can see that by uh, doing any of these operations, I will get to a new neighbor, okay, adding an edge. And I'm not showing all of the neighbors to just to make it simple. I'm only focusing on these three. So the next step is to calculate the score, the likelihood score for all of the neighbors. I'm not going into the details. Here they are. And we can check that uh, the G2 is obviously the, the maximum, and we can check that it's greater than the empty graph. Recall it's a likelihood score, adding edges will, will not make it worse. Okay, so G2 is the better neighbor. Well, then I will move to G2, and that will be my new current state. Now, from G2, if I delete MC, I will get back to G0. If I flip MC, I will get to another neighbor. If I add DC, I will get to this neighbor G4 and so on. Again, I will calculate the likelihood scores. Here we see that G4 is the maximum. So this is the new current state. I will move there. And now I will calculate which of my new neighbors are the maximum. Here are the likelihoods. And I can see that G7 has the highest likelihood. So that will be my new current state, and I will move to that state. When I'm at G7, I have my new neighbors. I, sh I have to calculate the likelihoods of all of the neighbors. And then I will see that none of them are scoring higher. Okay, so the highest one is G10, which is the same as G7. It's not too surprising because they are I equivalent, and it's a likelihood score. So I have basically reached a local maximum. Okay, I cannot move further from here. And actually, in this case, we know that this is a global maximum because a fully connected network is the has the highest score for a likelihood score. Okay, so my final DAG will be this. Back to the greedy hill climbing search. One issue that we saw was that the number of neighbors to search at each node can be too many. Even with three nodes, we had difficulties to visualize all of them. And one solution is to evaluate only a sample of the neighbors at each step, not all of them. And this results in the first ascent hill climbing algorithm. I'm not going to go into the details of that, but one common issue, as with other local search algorithms, is that uh, the hill climbing is likely to get stuck in a local maximum. Okay. Stochastic hill climbing may help to find a local maximum with a higher score. And the idea is that from neighbors with a higher score than the current DAG, one is selected randomly. This uh, th and the probability of choosing each neighbor is proportional to the improvement it makes to the score. This may result in a local maximum with a higher score, but still, only a local maximum is guaranteed. Any other approach? Well, we can force exploring new directions, even if the immediate visited states are not scoring higher. And this is the idea with the taboo search. Once an operator is applied, say adding the link x to y, don't reverse it for a while. Don't delete x, y. Uh, for a number of steps. So if based on this idea, we can come up with an algorithm. So set an initially empty taboo list of operators. Each operator that is added to the taboo list stays there for k steps and then is removed. Start from an initial state G G G0, as in the hill climbing. Choose an operator whose reverse is not in the taboo list. Okay, This is the difference. In the hill climbing, we would just look into all possible operators. Here, we will not uh, take the reverse. We will not take an operator if 
the reverse is in the table list. That guarantees that we will uh, we will keep that operator for a while. If the resulting neighbor has a higher score, then first add that operator to the table list and hold it there for the next case steps and then similar to the hill climbing move to the resulting neighbor this is considered as an improvement because the score has increased now increase the step number by one and stop if the desired number of improvements is reached otherwise go back to step to step three here we cannot say like uh, as in the hill climbing if a local maximum has reached and stop because we are forcing an operator so uh, even if the score is lower we may m move in that direction instead we need to focus on a desired number of improvements okay great what else well another approach is to occasionally move to a randomly selected non-neighbor state so imagine that we are in this current state the idea is that once in a while we'll just run into a uh, we use a random walk and go to another state this is the random walk approach and increases the chance of reaching the global maximum okay now uh, and the, the reason is because it, ha it, take, it can take us out of the local maximum. Now note that none of these methods guarantee a global maximum. Indeed, rarely they can find one. However, a global search often requires the whole search space to be searched, which is computationally costly. So you may say, why not to, s to use a global search? This is the reason. It's quite computationally costly. Indeed, even for the case where the score function is decomposable and the maximum number of parents of a node is limited to d greater than or equal to 2, finding the high score DAG is an NP-hard problem. We will see what we mean by function decomposability. This is basically a, a handy uh, property of, of a function that allows us to reduce the number of computations this one is just limiting the number of parents if even if we limit it to two say at if each par each node has at most two parents then still this is an NPR problem Le if you don't know what is NPR let's just say it's it's too hard <laughs> it's non polynomial okay so that's why we usually have to rely on a local sort a local search cannot perform a global search if we have many variables so okay then what is the computational complexity of a local search is it much better than uh, the global search well suppose that it takes k steps to reach the high score DAG G star from the initial DAG G0 and by each step I mean moving to a new state to a neighbor how many operators are applied and evaluated at each step uh, and that means to find the neighboring DAG with the high score. Well, the maximum number of edges in a DAG with n vertices is O of n squared. And for each edge, either the DAG already has it and hence can delete or flip it or doesn't have it and hence can add it. So the number of operators, operators in each step is O of n squared still. Okay. So a total of O of K times N squared operations are applied to get from G0 to G star. Now, for each operator, two tasks are performed. First is checking the acyclicity of the resulting network. So I may have my, my network here. I apply one of these operators and then I may end up with a cycle. So we need to check for that. If, the l if we limit the number of parents to D, the total number of edges is n times d, and the complexity of acyclicity check can be shown to be of order nd. Okay, that's with this. And, okay, if I don't have cycles, then I need to compare the score of the neighbor with the current state. And this happens with the complexity order om. We need to find m now. So the complexity of the search is O of k n squared times m plus nd. But what is m? 
So what is the complexity of comparing the, sc the score of a DAG with the score of, the, of its neighbor? In general, we may need to compute separately the scores of the two DAGs and then compare them. However, the difference between the two DAGs is just a single, a single edge. So if the score is somewhat decomposable, we need to, uh, to compare only the parts related to the edge, not the whole network. And this is the idea with score decomposability. The score function S, we call it decomposable. If it can be decomposed into the family scores of all of the variables in this way. Now, what is a family score? The family score of X is some function of X, its parents PAX and the data D. So it's essentially evaluating the feet of the parents of X as the parents uh, of this PAX as the parents of X. Okay? It's quite handy, like it's uh, decomposing the, the score as a summation of some local scores, XI and the parents of XI. For example, in the likelihood case, the likelihood score is decomposable with this term, right? We had it written as the summation of XI and the parents of XI as the mutual information and the entropy, okay? What about the Bayesian score? Is that also decomposable? Well, it requires some additional properties such as the global pr parameter independence of, of the parameter prior. Okay, so if I have this useful property, how can it affect the score-based algorithm? Well, let's see. Uh, let's, let's define this delta S of G O and let it be the change that uh, the change that applying operator O on G creates on the score. So delta S G O is the score of the new network after applying O minus the score of the previous network. Let's see how th this is for comparing G with with its neighbor, right? So we want to see how this will look like using this decomposability uh, property. Well, uh, if the addition of an edge XY, if this has happened from G to its neighbor, then the difference will simply be the family score of Y and the parents of Y, but when X is, is included also as the parents, because we're adding it here, minus the previous case where we had just family score of Y and its parents. So you see that we only need to compare to calculate it locally. We don't care about the other nodes, only to, uh, we care about Y. If we delete such an edge, then again it's similar. It's just the family score of Y and the parents of Y. This time X is ex excluded minus the family score of Y and parents of Y. And the reversal of an edge, it's, it's a similar idea. X parents of X when Y is added minus the original case and Y parents of Y when X is excluded minus the original case. So we see that using the decomposability property of the score function, addition or deletion leads to changing only one local score term and reversal leads to two score term changes. Thus, they result in at most two local changes in the score. The score of the other parts remain unchanged. This is very useful. So OM is the same as the complexity order of computing a family score, not the whole network. Hence, score decomposability can significantly reduce the computational costs of the local ser search algorithms. Great, let me move to another useful property. We know that equivalent DAGs impose the same conditional independencies, but do they also share the same score? Let's define this as the score equivalence property. A scoring function satisfies score equivalence if it takes the same value over all I equivalent structures and under every data set. Theorem. The likelihood score and the BIC score, they satisfy sco uh, score equivalence. That is great. That is uh, implying that 
likelihood and BIC under these two, uh, we don't care about the direction of an edge as long as it doesn't, it, it still falls into the same I equivalence class. What about the Bayesian score? Well, uh, in general, it violates the score equivalence. The exception is when we have BDE priors. We didn't cover that in this, in this course. But you can look it up and if you are interested. Under score equivalence, we don't need to search through different networks that are I equivalent. And this means that we can reduce the search space. Okay, so if I if one of my neighbors has the is I equivalent to the current state, I don't need to search or I don't I don't need to uh, calculate that neighbor. Another technique that will reduce the computational cost is to use a known variable ordering and by that we mean some ordering like this x1 to xn and this means that the parents of xi is a subset of its precedings x1 to xi minus 1. You may say well where how can we know this ordering? In some applications this ordering may be known a priori. For example if it's an event over time we may assume that the event in the future does not influence the one in the past, so we may just assume that the future one is uh, on the in the bottom and the past ones are on the top. Okay, now what can we say about this? Well, here we have the proposition, let score GD be a decomposable score, so we still need that. Among the scores, among the structures consistent with the above ord ordering, the maximum score structure is the one that satisfies this. So I only need to set parents of xi to be the arg max of the family score of xi and u, where u is it's, uh, chosen from its preced uh, precedings. This means that we can learn the parents for each variable independently. When I'm choosing the parents of xi, I, uh, it, it has nothing to do with when I'm choosing the parents of xi plus 1. Okay? So n separate potentially small learning problems should be solved when I use such an ordering. Now, suppose that we want to learn the parents of xn, for example, the last one in the ordering. The parent set should be selected among 2 to the power of n minus 1 sets of variables, large number of parents can lead to overfeeding, so we may limit it to some number d, which here we're assuming that it's less than n over 2. Then the number of possible parents is 1 plus uh, 1 out of n minus 1 plus all the way to d out of n minus 1. This is for when we when xn doesn't have zero any parents. This one is when it has just one parent, all the way when it has d parents. And because of this assumption, uh, this will be of order d times uh, d out of n minus 1. Okay, um, so th this is less than or equal to this term. Other nodes have fewer parents, thus uh, the whole parent sets are just this number above times n, and this will result in O of d times d out of n. Uh, for a fixed d, this is polynomial in n, which makes it tractable. This is great. Just note that nevertheless it is exponential in d, so it may reduce, uh, uh, it may limit d to a small number, say 4 or so. Okay? Now, to the summary, we already saw that uh, we can have a number of scores like the likelihood, Bayesian, and BIC to perform the constraint-based algorithm. The question is, given any of these scores, how can we perform a systematic search? We don't want to exhaustively search all of these. We want to perform a systematic one and obtain the optimal one, like these and these here. And the answer is that, well, uh, we can perform a local search such as the hill climbing and taboo search to obtain the optimal one in this way. Thank you.